The Truth About My Doppelganger by K.B. Hurst I have been having the dream since I was about 16. I was in the woods, running from someone chasing me, fueled by anxiety. When he finally caught up to me, he looked exactly like me. Only, he was an old man. The first time I encountered what you would call a doppelganger was back in college. It was a seemingly innocent mistaken identity. I worked in the kitchen at our university to help pay for my tuition when, one afternoon, a guy came in asking me if I still had the yellow bug for sale. I corrected him, telling him I didn't even own a car. I was living on campus, so I didn't need one. I was too poor to buy one back then, and so I rode my motorcycle when I needed to go off campus. The guy seemed genuinely confused. <laughs> uh, I just talked to you on Sunday in here, and you told me how bad the pizza was, and if you could sell your piece of junk Volkswagen, you could afford a decent pizza off campus. I smirked. I explained I didn't even work in the cafeteria on Sundays because I had basketball practice. He seemed confused, but eventually let it go. I didn't think anything more of it. Shit like that had been happening to me most of my life, since I was about 13. Only now, as a fully grown adult, did it become an issue. It became clear to me the morning I received a call for a job interview. I was so excited because this job will be twice my salary now if I got hired. The interview was at 8 the following morning. It seemed super early, but I was really prepared. I didn't sleep well. I had begun having the nightmares again recently since I was a teenager. Me. Night. Running through a forest. There were candles. Black cloaks everywhere. Men in the shadows. Watching me. Then, bam, the alarm went off. The following morning I woke up, but when I looked at my alarm, the clock read 10 a.m. I panicked, rushing to call the company to apologize for my rudeness. The woman on the other end of the phone laughed. I said I didn't understand what could be so funny. Then she proceeded to enlighten me. You were so great in the interview that Mr. Jennings told me to call your office and offer you the job. But, uh, I didn't come to the interview. I think you must be mistaken. Oh, tall, dark hair. You wore a blue shirt? She laughed again. I looked at the suit that I had hanging up. It was my blue suit with the blue shirt. My lucky suit. So... Unless I blacked out and came home to sleep after, I had absolutely no recollection of this interview. Then she continued with her description. You have a slight scar over your left eyebrow that you joked about when we met. <laughs> you also mentioned you had a cat named Johnny. Or was it Job? I had all of those things. I then played it off and told her I was interested in the job. She advised me to report the following Monday, and I was hired on the spot, and I had been hired on the spot earlier that morning. So unless I had blacked out, <laughs> someone who looked exactly like me and had everything of mine had done the interview and had gotten me the job. The following Monday came, and I thought that I'd get a notice that I had been punked when I arrived at my new position. Yet, I entered the facility and was given a new badge, a lovely new cubicle fit with a plush ergonomic chair. I was astonished at how welcoming all the staff were at this company. I took my seat in the cubicle after a long meeting with the man who would be my new boss and took a deep breath. Whew, I made it. I kept thinking perhaps I was dreaming, but... I knew when I took a sip of the perfect coffee that I was not dreaming. The first month went smoothly, although there were a few oddities here and there 
like the fact I was constantly mistaken for the other version of myself whenever I went out to the front of the building to order breakfast from the food truck. Hey, didn't you just come down here? Well, you must be hungry. I needed it to add up. I kept telling myself that it was all a coincidence. And then it happened. I went home one evening after a night with friends. I met a girl named Tracy. We hit it off, and one thing led to another. We had sex in my kitchen, on the floor, in a burst of passion that I had no idea I even possessed. I remember that I passed out quickly. And then I had those dreams again. Again, I was being chased. And again, I was in fear for my life. When I got to the forest's edge, the man caught up to me. I pulled off the cloak of the man and I saw it was me. I woke, rolling over. Blood was next to my body. I scoured my apartment trying to find the source, thinking that it was Tracy. But then I got a text from her asking me to refrain from ever reaching out to her again. What the hell? Last I recalled, we had had the time of our lives. The blood was a bit off, though. I was hesitant to text her back, but I had to know. Why am I bleeding? I'm so sorry, but I have no recollection of last night. Seriously? She texted me back. Yes. Well, dude, you need to refrain from drinking so much. It was blood from punching your fist against the bed repeatedly. You s seemed to think it was funny, so I left. Seriously, dude, get some help. I still didn't recall any of this. I did make it to work on time, and everyone began to cheer when I walked into the office. Again, I was completely confused as to what the hell was going on. Hey, what's all this about? I asked, genuinely confused. How do you not remember that dude at the bar last night? My coworker Jake asked. He didn't begin to explain the prior night's shenanigans to me. He kept telling you to stop pretending to be him. I figured it was like your twin brother or something. You know, you guys looked alike, but he had this beard, and then you began to attack him. <laughs> we were all amazed at how easily you just took the guy. Then you got that hot chick to go home with you. So how was that anyway? Jake asked, patting me on the back. I gotta say, man, I don't remember most of the stuff from last night. Oh, right on. Hey, we all have those nights, right? He laughed. I figured I had drunk too much, yet the fact that I apparently went apeshit on some guy kind of gave me the creeps, especially after everything that had happened to me. I finished my day with no incident and went straight home. When I got inside my apartment, I realized it was a mess. Someone had broken inside my apartment. I was about to call the cops when I saw a shadowy figure holding a knife in my kitchen. You. The man said, Who are you? I asked. I'm you. Or should I say, you are me. You're an imposter. I looked at the shadow as I couldn't make out his face. I looked at the man, but he would not come out of the shadows. You're trying to ruin my life. It's my fault. I just kept wishing I was a better version of myself. Dude, what the hell are you talking about? No, of course you don't know. How could you? You were only... Oh, you are only maybe a decade old. I did it. That ritual. When we were kids, we all gathered in the woods using some book on black magic. We evoked you into reality. I wanted to take over. I wanted you to take over my body. You know, something had to take over me, make me better. I wanted to be someone I'm not. 
So, I did this fucking spell to reinvent myself. Only, it backfired. You've been slowly taking over my life since. Thanksgivings, Christmases, girls, and jobs. I looked at him, trying to understand. There's only one way out of this. Only one of us can live. I backed away from the crazy man, and then he entered the living room where I stood. I turned on the light, and there in front of me was a thinner, paler, dirtier version of myself. I didn't know what to think. And this guy who looked exactly like me, he'd been through hell. You could see it on his face. That's how I knew it was me, or him. Suddenly, flashes of memory began to surface. I recalled crawling under the ground the night of the ritual. I was faster, wiser, and better, equipped for life more than my predecessor. I was the better version of him. No, of me. He ran at me then with a knife and nearly got me. I grabbed a lamp and hit him over the head with it. But before I knew it, the wiry man was on top of me with the knife inches from my face. Then a knock at my door. He turned to look, and I pushed him onto his back and stabbed him. I caught him right into his throat. Blood was gushing everywhere. The knocking at my door was still going. I got up, blinked a few times, ran to the door. It was my neighbor, Dan. You okay? I heard... Uh... That's when he saw the body. Thank God you saved me. The knocking caused this maniac to turn away long enough for me to defend myself. My neighbor, Dan, helped me call the police as I was in a bit of shock. The cops came and took the man away. They saw the evidence of the struggle and the broken window, which was how he got into my apartment. I wasn't charged with anything. It was basically a clear case of self-defense. The following day, a considerable concern had been lifted. <laughs> No more did I have to worry about this doppelganger. The truth was, I was the doppelganger. And I had now successfully taken over the life of my lookalike. No more would I be unsure of myself, have worries, anxiety. No, I was the better version of me.